it is time for reviewing the reviews. We're here. Let's do this thing. Reviewing the reviews. Starting out with a one star. This is from Juan O. Uh, Juan O R L. Juan O R L. I don't know how to say that. Who cares? <clears throat> too much yet too little. Raimi's directing clashes with Marvel's vision to the point where it tries to do too much but ends up doing nothing. Elizabeth Ol Elizabeth Olsen's performance is great. But other than that, the dialogue feels forced all the time. America Chavez is a character. He spelled character wrong, but is a character is impossible to like, care, empathize with. Yeah, I agree with this. Not really that exciting. And I did think Elizabeth Olsen was all right. She was a little, she kind of overacts at, at moments, but whatever. Um, the plot tries too hard not to be predictable to the point where it leads right where you thought it was going to go. The few minutes of expected MCU fan service are absolutely redundant to the plot as it helps establish how powerful Wanda is, which is already shown beforehand. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, it is pretty redundant. Um, it does have some impressive visuals and the music is brilliant, but the overall one of the worst experiences I've had in a theater in a while. To be fair, the expectations was very high. Yeah, and I get what he's saying here about, uh, you know, the, the fan service cameos. Um, you know, we saw uh, Captain Britain or whatever her name is, the Peggy Carter as Captain America or Captain Britain. Like, we saw her in that um, What If series, which I watched literally that episode, and I was like, I didn't even like the animation style. So I'm like, I watched, like, I think the first two or three episodes of that, and I was like, I'm good on this. I didn't like the animation style for any of the episodes. I'm like, this just looks ugly, and I'm not going to watch a show that looks ugly. But yeah, I kind of agree with this, though. Except for this. I don't think it was one of the worst experiences I've had. I did have a couple of high schoolers sitting next to me that were just laughing at so many moments throughout the film uh, <laughs> that I thought was really funny. Their commentary was kind of funny, um, especially for a lot of the cringe humor and moments. Two stars. Let's do it. It's from Bobby Aitken. That this movie was made is the real horror. <laughs> If I had to describe this film in one word, it would be garbage. Oops. Hang on. Get this in frame. There we go. <clears throat> if I had to describe this film in one word, it would be garbage. It is messy. It takes incredible Marvel characters and forever destroys them and totally squanders the vast multiverse of opportunities available. It seems my hopes for a good capture of the multiverse after Loki were smashed again. It's the rocks. And that is the real horror in this movie. It seems that DC has finally found the one place they can beat Marvel hands down. And that is their handling of the multiverse and the awesome possibilities it brings. My only highlight was the extended cameo scene. Um, at least Eternals is no longer the worst Marvel film. <laughs> um, yeah, the cameo scene was pretty exciting. Just to watch those characters fight and get rocked was pretty awesome. Um, I don't really agree with this either. I think DC's multiverse is a mess too. So <laughs> not really, I don't like any of these multiverse ideas. They're just like, it, that's how, you know, we're getting, we're hitting the end point of these superhero films is when you start seeing the multiverse come in. I just, I'm like, Ugh. three stars. Here we go. Dr. Boring. This one's from Jonathan Showreels. Dr. Boring and the multi mess of inconsistencies. <laughs> God damn it. I'm quite positive in general about MCU movies. I think they are entertaining and have good production, which don't make them, which don't make look cheap. I think he was trying to say, what don't make them look cheap. But this was unfortunately not entertaining at all and felt really cheap, messy and inconsistent. I don't think it felt cheap. I mean, it looked expensive, but uh, the messy and inconsistent, I can and buy into more. 
the movie feel way too long for what it has to narrate. And the CGI, good lord, was really disturbing at some points. Sometime you should see the style of Raimi. Sometimes you see the style of Raimi, but it never really feel consistent with what you see. Yep, yeah, this is what I was kind of talking about earlier. How this, it, it felt like Sam Raimi's hands were tied making this. Like it did, it, you know, you feel little drips and little pockets of Sam Raimi, and those are some of the best moments of this film. But they come few and far between, and and the rest of the time it just feels like a run of the mill MCU film. Um, instead of something more unique, which is what I was hoping it would be, was more of a, a horror film. I mean, you get like horror moments, but it's really just your basic MCU film. Let's go to four stars. Let's find a good one here. Here we go. This is from Jacqueline Sandra 34671. I can't believe I'm right. No, it's called titled Disappointing. I can't believe I'm writing a bad Marvel review, but I can't lie. This movie was really disappointing. A couple of surprises, but when I was expecting way more after watching No Way Home. Um, didn't mind the horror side of the story. It actually made me laugh. As for the as for the music, I'm a huge fan of Danny Elfman, but the music was bad. Really, I thought the music was pretty good. I won't watch this one again. Marvel, we are used to greatness. Please don't do that again. <laughs> Fair enough. Five stars. <laughs> Here we go. This is from Dragons and Owls. Multiverse of Midness. <laughs> I like that. It was mid. <laughs> Not much else to say. It wasn't awful. And is pretty on par with the first Doctor Strange film. Here's to hoping that Thor Love and Thunder is better. Eh, maybe. Wasn't really that excited about that trailer, to be honest with you. Um, I can't help but feel that most Phase 4 Marvel films, this one in particular, relies on the audience watching past content. Of which isn't just the previous films, but Series 2 in which a way feels unfair and takes what was so great about many of the past Marvel films that being that anyone could go in blind, this idea also contributing to Marvel's success was, was it a disappointment? Yeah, no, I, I actually like this point he makes here um, about, you know, basically you have to rely on seeing the other films and other shows now in order to understand what's going on. And, how the you know this film does not stand on its own whatsoever. I totally agree with that point. It does not, and that's my problem with a lot of these modern MCU films. They they don't stand alone as good MC as good standalone films. I mean, the only one that really I, I I was fine with not was Infinity Wars, and that's because it you know wasn't supposed to stand alone. But some of these are supposed to. I feel like um, like I shouldn't have to watch all the shows to understand what's happening here. You know, and even if you watch Infinity Wars without seeing the other ones, I mean, yeah, you may be a little bit, you know, confused and disconnected in some moments, but you'll at least get the idea. Um, this is just kind of, if you didn't watch WandaVision or, you know, some of the other films, you would have no idea what's going on. Um, so, I mean, I get what this guy's saying. Um, yeah, but I agree. It was pretty mid. <laughs> the multiverse of midness. I like that. <laughs> here we go six stars this is a six star I know you can't see it but here let me see if I can get it in the frame sorry my ears itching six stars it's from Daniel Gramos. Don't waste your precious time. Disappointed. The start of the movie is really slow. But then all of a sudden, everyone decides to run faster than Sonic. <laughs> In the first half of the movie, there will be a lot of plot holes. A lot. We are introduced to a character that fills all the requirements to be an interesting and important piece of the story. Power comes from believing, quote-unquote, 
lesbian parents, mixed race. <laughs> this was not a Doctor Strange movie. They tried to force a little bit of horror, which was somewhat mediocre. You don't need to watch a lot of horror movies to know that jump scares don't make a character scary. Yeah, there is the there is a couple cheap jump scares, but I actually thought the one that we got was pretty pretty good. Um they added a little more gore, which was cool in my opinion. Disappointed. I don't recommend it. Yeah. I thought, like I said, the gore and the violence was definitely uh, pretty good. Um, yeah. Yeah, but basically a lot of people are just saying that, you know, kind of through the halfway point, even I missed it when I went to six stars, but people are mostly saying that, you know, it's mid tier, not that exciting, predictable. Yeah. <laughs> Seven stars. This is from uh Naru Corn. <laughs> I think so you say that. <clears throat> Raimi's directing skills carry the movie. Without him, this would be even worse. Actually, I expected many things in the movie before it was released, plus all the spots and trailers that hype me so much. This movie has every Raimi's has every Raimi's style, such as great camera angles, editing, and color grading. Also, the terrifying tone from every Raimi movie. Besides the great things in this movie, it carries a bunch of weird dialogues and screenplay. There are lots of plot holes in this movie. In this movie, there are so many elements that can be used in future movie in further movies, but they just like throw it in some bad ways I never understand. So as an MCU fan, this just makes me disappointed so much. As I say, without Raimi directing style, this would be even worse than it is. Yeah, some of the dialogue was pretty bad in this film, I will say. Some of the writing I was not really that excited about. And like I said, this whole idea of the, M of the MCU multiverse is just just not... I'm not liking it at all. Haven't really liked it from the beginning. Eight stars. Here we go. We're going to start seeing people really like this film. This is from Mr. Lucas War Hero. Eight stars. Sam Raimi doing what he does best. While this film has more has a more grim tone than its predecessors, it's still a Marvel film at heart. Of course, it would take Sam Raimi to find the perfect blend of comic book, movie, horror, fantasy, and slapstick. He might be working with a massive budget now, but the man stays true to his roots. Sticking with what he knows pays off. I mean, he's worked with massive budgets before, though, but I get what he's saying. And um, I agree. Raimi, the, the moments that you can tell Raimi had his hands on, like I said, are the best parts of this film. And maybe I should have made that a little bit more clear, but I did mention that a lot. Um, the pacing may seem disjointed and f or fragmented at times, but I feel that only reflects the complex nature of the Voltiverse within the film. I don't think this is necessarily a good thing, though. Maybe it's not like other groundbreaking MCU films, but ultimately this is an entertaining feature. Fair enough. Getting towards the end here. Nine stars. All right. This is from King Zekno. Nine stars. Straight up madness. Doctor Strange and the Multi Multiverse of Madness is a fun, messy MCU film which follows the adventures of Doctor Strange and Wanda trying to save the multiverse from a threat. Now, I can't say much about this movie, but I can say it's an amazing film with beautiful shots and visuals and is extremely well directed. Thanks, Sam Raimi. Though the writing is a bit sloppy and messy at times in the movie, most of the dialogue is pretty good. Eh, I thought it was pretty weak, to be honest with you. And I do agree it's pretty sloppy and messy at times. I don't blame Raimi, though. I blame more of Michael Waldron, and I blame more of Kevin Feige and the MCU. Um, some parts are very... Because I feel like a lot of these movies are being made by committee, which is pretty much my biggest complaint with a lot of modern MCU films. Anyway, some parts are very messy, and I feel like they cut this movie way too short. <sighs> I still very much enjoyed it, but the thing that stood out to me is Sam Raimi. He uses horror elements from such movies as Evil Dead. 
It's the first horror movie in the MCU, which is amazing. Oops. Um, it's also the most gruesome entry in the MCU. So don't think of bringing your kids there. Keep your expectations in check or else you will enjoy it less. Please don't get spoiled on the internet because the surprises and cameos are truly mind-blowing. I mean, sure. With the flaws that Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness carries, it still stands out to be one of the MCU's best entries yet. Yeah, I disagree. I think it's one of their weakest, in my opinion. Um, this is my fifth favorite Marvel movie. Well, good for this guy. I give it a 9 out of 10. Yeah, well, that's your opinion. Great. Glad you enjoyed it. 10 out of 10. Who gave this a perfect score? Let's get like a, a kind of hefty review here. Here we go. This one should be good. <clears throat> this is from Milkrube389359735. 10 out of 10. I could be convinced this is a bot, maybe. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oops. Spectacular. A feast for the eyes. Hollywood magic. This flick is pure CGI entertainment. Hollywood magic. And a feast for the eyes blended with Sam Raimi's signature horror style visual visuality. Is that a word? That makes this one of a kind MCU show uh, unique and satisfying. Ugh. Sorry about. Apologize for the yawns. As you can tell, I'm getting home from this late at night. Um, Doctor Strange is amazing, and Scarlet Witch is scary and unstoppable. They're great antagonist protagonist chemistry that really captures your wild imagination of the universes, of their universes. For those who expect too much about cameos and other MCU characters in the flick, you might get disappointed on the show. Some scenes might have surprises, though, but not enough to satisfy you are into that level of expectations. What does he mean here? I guess he's saying, like, this won't meet your expectations. I don't know. This one didn't really make a lot of sense. I'll do one more. Here we go. Better. This one's short. Thomas Hill. Thomas L. Hiscox. Better than Endgame. Yeah, I said it. I'm here for Scarlet Witch supremacy. Easily the greatest character in the current roster for of MCU. Looking forward to seeing the multiverse expand, and hopefully we get our MCU mutants in, in Fantastic Four. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's all I got to say, folks. I mean, you've heard what I had to say. I w didn't love this film, thought it was kind of blah. Um, and I think that's pretty much the consensus from these reviews as well. Just kind of a really messy film. Didn't love it. Um, I didn't hate it either. I thought it was probably middle of the road, maybe one of the weaker MCU films. But I didn't say, I mean, MCU really hasn't had that many really bad films. Um, I mean... I would probably put this one, though, probably in the bottom five if I had to rank them. And I probably will one day do a ranking of all of these films. Um, but, uh, yeah, not great. 